in this talk, we'll just walk uh, briskly through all the features uh, SQL Alchemy provides. We won't go uh, into much detail uh, on the advanced features, just cover the basic features. The idea of this talk is that if you have your laptop with you, you take your laptop and you type pip install SQL Alchemy, and you can follow the commands on your laptop so you have learned um, SQL Alchemy at the end of the talk. Uh, at the end of this talk, everybody should be able to implement um, a data layer for the EVE uh, uh, API in SQL Alchemy. So you can download um, all the commands of the talk at my website. If you use www.conceptive.be slash fosdem.html, uh, you can download uh, all the instructions. So um, we're going to cover uh, database connections working with tables in SQL Alchemy, um, creating SQL statements, mapping tables to classes, uh, manipulating objects, manipulating relations, and uh, I'll tell you something about transactions in SQL Alchemy. And we'll, we'll go over this uh, really fast. So if you have your laptop, pip install SQL Alchemy and uh, get started. First of all, SQL Alchemy is a, it's a library to work with um, relational databases in Python. Um, there are more libraries doing this, but SQL Alchemy is the library that gives you access um, to all the power of uh, SQL. So that's a, that's a basic, uh, basic understanding of SQL Alchemy, is that it helps you to manipulate SQL. It does not hide the SQL for you. So it's, it's not some magic um, to get rid of the SQL. Instead, it's a powerful tool to help you working with SQL. So if you're new to SQL Alchemy, a good thing to do is turn on the logging. So you import the logging module. And then first configure the basic Python logging. So we set the logging level to debug, like this. And then we turn on the logging of the SQL Alchemy engine. So we get the logger. Face. And set the logging level to debug. So this will make sure we see everything that SQL Alchemy sends to the database. And this can be very interesting in case you're uh, running into troubles. Often, by just looking at the SQL statements, you know what's happening. So if you're working in Python with databases, Python provides the uh, DB API, which is an API to which most of the database drivers that are available for Python adhere. So it gives you a uniform API in working with databases, but that's also where it stops. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't standardize how to create a connection to the database, but it does standardize the API of a connection. But once you have a connection to a database, yeah, you want to use this connection <coughs> for issuing statements. Um, then you have to create a cursor in, uh, in plain Python, and then this cursor creates a result set, and then you have to work with these results. Um, also, you don't want to create a new connection every time you are going to, to, to use the database. So you need a kind of connection pool and things like that. So it quickly starts to become difficult. And SQL Alchemy already has a lot of tools available here to, to help you out on this one. The first one is the connection pool. So to create a, a connection pool in SQL Alchemy is called an engine. Now, go first going to import everything import so don't do this in your code uh, we create a connection pool there's a function create engine and then sql alchemy provides some kind of, of uh, url which you can use to uh, connect to databases <laughs> so here i'm going to use a sqlite database in memory Okay, now that I've done this, uh, I've actually done nothing. So I did not connect to the database 
at this point in time, I just created a connection pool. So to connect to the database, I need to get a connection out of the connection pool. So connect. Now I have a connection to the database, and I can use this connection to send SQL to the database. I want to show you. So I get a result object is connection dot execute, and let's send some simple statement to our database. Let's try to find out uh, the result of 2 plus 2. So you see that uh, it has locked all the statements that were sent to the database. I get the result back. And to get this, a single value back, I call result.scalar, and I get 4 back. Uh, that looks good. Uh, we can talk to the database, and we have a connection pool. Next thing you want to do if you work with SQL, it's working with tables. Yeah? But remember, SQL Alchemy is for working with relational databases. The word relational is important here. It means we're never working with a single table. Instead, we're working with tables which relate to each other. So in SQL Alchemy, all the information about tables that relate to each other is stored in an object called the metadata. So before we can create a single table, we have to create our a set of tables, which is, uh, which is the <coughs> metadata object. So let's create it. Metadata is metadata. So this is our metadata object. And now we can start constructing tables. I'll first construct a table to store uh, person information. So that's a table object. This is the name of the table um, as it will be used in the database. Then I pass the set of tables to which it belongs, so the metadata. And then I can specify um, any number of columns um, that have to be present in the table. So I create an integer column, which is a primary key. And I add another column, um, which is the name of the person. And that's a string with 25 characters. And it's not nullable, so it's a, it's a required field. Primary, primary, primary key equals true, I have to say. OK, I have created a table. You <coughs> see this table, it's a table, it's an object. It's, it doesn't exist in the database yet. It's an object. It has uh, a property called columns, which is a list of columns. I can get the keys of it. Yeah. And if I look in my set of tables, the metadata, there is a list of tables, and I see the table um, is in there as well. So now I want to create um, this table into the database. Um, that's done by calling on the metadata. You call create all, and you, s you give it a connection pool, which points to a database in which the tables need to be created. So I say metadata create all engine. And this will issue the SQL needed to create the table. If the table already existed, it won't create it again. So if you modify your table, you first have to drop it and then recreate it. There is, a, there is an equivalent method, uh, <coughs> drop all on metadata as well. OK, now that we have a table, we can start um, doing things with this table and, and create SQL statements for this table. So let's create an insert clause. So table or table or person table has a method called insert. If I call this method, I get a clause object back. Yeah? Let's print it. You see, it's an SQL clause. We didn't actually insert anything. We just created a clause object which creates, uh, which inserts data into um, our person table. And then I can start to use this clause <coughs> by sending it to the engine. So I'm going to call engine execute execute the clause and the clause needs some action some data to insert so i'll specify um, the name of the person let's insert insert guido in our table that's it 
So you see SQL Alchemy created. Um, the SQL needed to insert Guido in the table. Also notice that here in the clause there was the ID parameter and SQL Alchemy just dropped the ID parameter because I didn't specify it uh, in the call of the execute. So that's all, all magically happening uh, for you. Another thing we can do is insert um, multiple rows at once. For example, if, if you're reading in a file in your database um, or you're working with a larger data set, you want to handle um, multiple rows at once, that's just, then you just pass uh, a list of dictionaries um, to the execute method. So let's insert Mike. and uh, mark in our table as well. So it's a list of dictionaries. And you see they are inserted in a single statement, they are inserted in the table. We can create select statements as well. So let's create a new clause. Again, just by calling on the table object, um, or s the select method. Again, we have an SQL clause. Yeah, we didn't do anything. <coughs> now, and this is one of the, of the most powerful features of SQL Alchemy. When you have a clause, you can start manipulating this clause step by step. So it's a, it's a really easy way to um, to manipulate your SQL. You can um, create multiple clauses starting from one base clause and things like that. So for example, let's, let's put a <laughs> limit on the number of persons we select. Just goes like this, create a new clause, which is our previous clause dot limit one. Okay, print the clause, let's have a look. So it, the limit uh, part was added to the clause. Um, Let's add some ordering. Let's order this clause, the, the result set by name. So we do order by table dot columns dot name. Print the clause again. And um, the order by clause uh, part is, uh, is inserted into the statement. Okay, now to fetch the results, again, we are going to send this clause to the engine. Okay, now the actual SQL has been sent to the database. We got the result proxy back and we're going to fetch the results. So just say print result dot fetch one to fetch a single row, there is only one row because we limited it. And Guido comes out first. Okay, now we'll have a look at the object relational mapper. Um, this is the part most people start to use when they start to use uh, SQL Alchemy. Um, it's the object relational mapper. And the easiest way to use the object relational mapper is, is to use the declarative extension. Um, because the declarative extension allows you to define classes and tables at once. It looks a bit like uh, the Django <laughs> model definition um, or other things. Uh, other libraries in Python are, are much alike. So again, we are working in a, with relational databases. So we are not working with a single table, at, uh, but with multiple tables. We are not working with a single class, but with multiple classes. So. Um, first, let me create a new metadata object to put our tables in. Okay. So, uh, in the declarative extension, you have to create a base class and all your classes that you want to map to your databases have to extend this base class. So, this way you get a, s a complete set of classes that belong together and are related to each other. So. I'm going to import the needed statements from SQL Alchemy dot extension dot declarative 
import everything. Then I create a base class. This is done by calling the declarative base function. Base. And I pass um, metadata. Okay, this is metadata equals metadata. So in this way, we associate our set of classes which will uh, be subclasses of base with a set of tables which will be stored in metadata. <coughs> so now let's, let's create the same person table um, through the declarative extension. You have to specify under under table name, which is the name of the table. That's uh, obvious. So let's use person again. And then we define the columns of the table, which will be the attributes of the objects um, created by this class. So we have an idea again. Column integer <coughs> primary key is true. And the name 25 characters. And it's required, so it's not nullable. Nullable is false. Um, typo. Okay, so we have defined uh, create. We have defined a class, the person class. Okay, if you look at person, you'll see that person has an attribute under under table, which is um, the person table, which is created at the same which is created at the same time as the person class. It has columns as well. You see, ID and name as columns, and there is also uh, under under mapper, which is a SQL alchemy mapper, which is an object which defines the mapping between the table and the person. So by default, you get a simple mapping that each column in the table uh, becomes uh, a property of your, of your class. But um, you, can, you can define much, uh, much more complicated uh, setups as well. So to create these tables, we can just call the base class metadata create all <coughs> to the engine. You see that now it didn't create an actual table because we created the table uh, previously <coughs> with the plain SQL. So now that we've defined a person class, uh, we can start create start manipulating person objects. So here again, when we're working with objects, which are actually rows in our database, we're never working with a single object we're always working with a set of related objects. So like we had the metadata and we had the base class, we now have a thing called the session. And a session is a set of related objects we're working with at the same time. So in SQL Alchemy talk, you first have to create a session factory. And that is usually uh, a session with a, with a capital S. And then you call the method session or first have to import everything. We import everything from the object relational mapper. I create a session factory with the session maker function. And I connect this session factory to uh, an engine this means every time I create a new session object, which will be a set of objects I'm working with, they will be connected to this database. Then I create a session itself by calling the session factory, like this. Now, every object that I want to um, manipulate and store in the database or retrieve from the database should be associated with a session. <coughs> so if I create a new person object, person, person, with name equals Guido. 
So if I want to store this object in the database, I have to add it to a session. So I say session.add person. Let's see what's in the session. The session has a new attribute. This is a list of all the objects that exist in memory but are not yet stored in the database. Okay. So I now call session.flush, which means store any changes you have in the session in the database. And you see the SQL is generated to insert um, the person in the database. If you want to query objects from the database, again, you have to go through a session because all these objects need to be in a session. So querying is done like this for person in session.query person. Just get everything in there. I say print person not name. And I get um, all the persons that were stored in the database as objects. Now, a relational database wouldn't be much fun without relations. So um, let's create an address class that relates to the person class so that one person can have many addresses. So let's create an address. We it's also a subclass of our base class because it belongs to the same set of related classes. It has a table name. Address. It has an ID as well. which is the primary key. It has, a, it has um, a person ID attribute, which relates to the um, ID of the person. So this is an integer column. And I say this is a foreign key to the person ID, like this. And s the address has a street as well which is also a column um, of 25 characters. So um, we created a new class and a table and a mapper. So let's quickly um, create the needed tables in the database. So we call ba ba base.metadata create all in the engine. And you see the table uh, is created. So now we have defined relations at the database level. We also want to rel define relations at <coughs> the object level. So we give the address class uh, a property called person, which relates to uh, the actual person class. Um, SQL Alchemy will introspect the address class and find the foreign key relation and reuse that to get our object relation working. And we give this relation a backref, meaning that not only address will have a person, but person will have a list of addresses as well. So if we now create a new person, we'll see that this person has a list of addresses, which is now empty. And this is one of the fun things um, SQL Alchemy does for you. If I now create a new address, uh, related to this person, like this, so I've created an address which is related to our person. If I then look at the person level in the list of addresses, the address will be there. So the SQL Alchemy uh, object relational mapper always takes care that the relations on both sides uh, are in sync. And then when I flush the session, everything is written to the database again. Ah, I didn't add the person to the session, so nothing happened. Haha. <laughs> at the person you see and i added the person 
and the person was related to the address, so the address was automatically added to the session as well. And then I just flush the session and everything is written <coughs> to the database. So now let's have a look at transactions. What SQL Alchemy does for us, it keeps the transactions of our database in sync with our session. So I first commit the session, which means finished two minutes <laughs> um, so this means we close um, the existing transactions and now we start to modify one of our objects so I change the name of the person to Michael yeah and I create a new address object that which relates to our person and I give it a street uh, equals none, which is null, um, which is illegal because I had to because street was a mandatory field. If I now flush the session, I will get an exception, yeah, because because street uh, could not be null. And now I can just call session dot rollback, <coughs> and not only is the is there a rollback in the database but there is also a rollback in the transaction if i look now to the name of the person it's mark again so not only did sql alchemy roll back the database but also all objects have been restored to their previous state so i hope this uh, shows you a bit of the power of sql alchemy there was also a lot of more advanced features which i'm not going to talk about anymore so <laughs> thank you